Um, there are so many risks involved when doing these kind of investments. There's a technical risks, economic risks, and and what about the market risk? Is 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 there a big risk that there simply is no market for your byproducts? That's a good question, and and th that's why we started with this demonstration plant over here. The, the size of the demonstration is 10 million liters, which is something like one-fifth of uh, the, the full-scale production. So the, the risk on capital is, is limited. And uh, the other risk is that uh, before we entered there, the sawdust we was going from this sawmill to this power plant. So what has actually changed the, the uh, truck is going a little bit, maybe 200 meters longer uh, track. And then we produce the ethanol, or if we don't produce, we can sell the sa sawdust to the power plant as well. That is a technological risk uh, mitigation system as well. And the side products, the original idea was that we sell the side products here to the large boiler plant, and that is our baseline. And of course, we want to create more valuable and more wise products than uh, fuel, solid or liquid fuels for the for the boiler plant. But this is the uh, risk mitigation possibility in the in the first place. The difficulty, of course, is that how to make the first plant uh, up and running in a, in a commercial mode. Well, uh, we have done our lot of work. We have. Uh, uh, we had some some uh, support for Finnish government. It helps, but still we are in, in the in the in a hoping mode, <laughs> so to speak, that this would would be uh, commercially viable in a, in a profit and pro profitable. Challenging. Uh, we op open up the floor for questions to Patrick. If there are any questions, one over there and one back. Yes, please. First, you in row number six. Can you hear me? Oh. I'm Antonio Oliveira from the Institute for Energy Technology in uh, Norway. Thank you for your, your presentation. It's very inspiring to, to see industry doing such a development. And my, my question is regarding to the, the CO2 that you're producing there. There is a huge potential of making something that's uh, already zero carbon to be uh, negative. And uh, do you already have plans to use the CO2? Yes, um, CO2 we are producing actually as many tons of uh, ethanol, we produce also CO2. And, um, and uh, like I said, we have a pilot cooperation with a company called Q Power to methanize uh, the CO2. That's one, one way to forward. We have also piloted some, some uh, uh, applications developed by VTT. So there's a number of uh, different uh, approaches besides the existing just purifying and liquefying. That is something that we also discussed in the early days, but our units are currently so small and so far away of consumption of uh, liquid co carbon dioxide that they were not interested. So we are looking at those uh, transformation technologies uh, from, from third parties uh, to operate with those. And it's very promising, I have to say. There was a question back in the room. Yeah. Gudbrand Rødstrud from Borgard. Uh, can you say anything about the yield from wood to ethanol? Can I say anything about the yield from wood to ethanol? Yes, I can. <laughs> 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 it's limited. <laughs> but um, since we have this process where we have our lovely, uh, valuable side products and very, very, very keen to produce these side products, so our yields are currently uh, somewhere 200 uh, plus minus something uh, from a bone dry ton of, uh, of pine. There was one question over there, and then we got Patricia as well. Was there one question over there? No? All right, Patricia. Over here. Thank you. Could you comment on the scale of operations that you think is viable? Obviously, you're looking here at a sawdust feedstock, so 
I'm guessing that you've focused around that. But when you look at the markets for the products, and you said that you know this pilot was maybe five times smaller than you would ideally have done, where do those trade-offs sit? Yes, uh, a good question about the the opportunities in in Nordics are. Uh, like I said, we, are, uh, we consider a full-scale plant, 50 million liters plant. Uh, it could be more, but uh, feedstock availability in the radius point of view is obviously something. There is room for two plants of that uh, in Finland, and we have already started uh, permitting operations for those. And uh, one in Norway, and uh, at least two in, in Sweden. But let's see how it works. And, and then we have done the homework in, in home countries, but uh, and hope that uh, in the f long run, we can also be available uh, and, and do a cooperation in uh, uh, more central Europe, where is, is also a lot of uh, uh, softwood production, and especially in, in Americas, there is a lot of softwood production and a lot of uh, sawdust, which is currently flooding here in, in Europe as a pellet. So, Maybe we should transform it there as a, as a fuel on, on that side of the pond. All right, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you so much. And a gift for you. Oh. From Sweden, we love. <laughs>